I think we're really lucky to live in a community that believes that having quality food is something that um, that everybody deserves. And when everybody has quality food, it makes the whole community strong. So I'm proud to be one of the pieces of the community that's helping do that. Um, there's a lot of other amazing things happening throughout the community around food and food access. Um, and the pantry is excited to be part of that network. My name is Reeve Basum and I'm currently the president of the board of directors for the Hardwick Area Food Pantry. Um, I work at the Center for an Agricultural Economy here in Hardwick, which um, has a variety of partnerships with the pantry. We're able to, we're able to invite people to come back as often as they need for the, the fresher produce, and that's something that we've heard is really valuable to people. Right now we have a whole bunch of really amazing cheese in our refrigerator, um, thanks to Jasper Hill. Um, we have local milk, local eggs, local bread. Um, I think those things are um, at the top of people's list for what they, what they need, what they wanna be eating. There are so many community members who um, come here to access this resource. And I think there are probably a lot of other folks who um, could really benefit from accessing the resource here. And I really hope that everybody feels welcome. Um, that is the message that we wanna be sending out to, to everyone in our communities is that um, this is really a place where everyone is welcome. And um, we're really interested in helping get food um, out into the community um, to wherever it's needed. I'm excited to be here and I am just in my first year now so I've been trying to reach out to the community and to find out from them and from the people who come here uh, what's going on, what's going well, what can we do differently um, and it's pretty exciting because a lot of work has been done at the food pantry prior to me coming and um, I just see a lot of potential here. I feel really fortunate to live in Vermont and to be able to leverage the different uh, systems that are here. Um, we rely on farmers, we get foods that are rescued through the food bank, through the grocery stores, um, we can purchase through our local grocer grocery stores um, and that makes it so we haven't really seen a lack of food here at the food pantry because we have different avenues to access food our systems are more resilient here. So we are affiliated with the Vermont Food Bank and we're able to purchase foods uh, through their bank. Um, so they're able to uh, offer those foods at larger amounts for less cost. We mostly rely on donations from community members. Uh, that's the way that the pantry has been run since it started, I believe. Um, and it's, the community has been generous enough where we don't, uh, we don't need to rely on state or government funds. I'm Rose Friedman and I live in East Hardwick. Um, I have two kids and I'm a local performer with Vermont Vaudeville and Modern Times Theater. And uh, when the shutdown came, uh, we were totally shut out of all work um, and so it seemed like a really great opportunity to be able to come and volunteer for the food pantry which was something I've wanted to do for a long time but with full-time work and two kids I haven't been able to so I came uh, right after the shutdown order um, happened I came over to see if, if I could help out and uh, what they needed most of all was somebody to pick up the donations from the co-op and bring them over and then the deliveries home deliveries started so now I'm doing that as well it's an absolute necessity that we have this in our communities and I only think that there should be more, more, more things like the food pantry to help people in a moment like this. The first time I came to volunteer, which was my first time here, I was, I was 
really impressed and overwhelmed with the uh, incredible variety of high quality foods. Um, I'm not sure what I expected, maybe just more canned goods um, and basics, but you know, they've got fresh farm meat from local farms and um, a really interesting variety of dairy and vegetables. And um, I, I was just impressed with, you know, what a huge palette they're offering to the community here. I just find, you know, the food pantry, the community lunch and those kinds of institutions to be really inspiring um, for what, what a community can look like and how we can help each other. Okay. Hi, I'm Nancy Notterman and I farm with my family, Helm Notterman and our son Ben and his wife Kelly. Uh, and we're Snug Valley Farm up in East Hardwick. And you may also know us as Ben's Pumpkins. And we raise pastured uh, pork, heritage pork, and, and grass-fed beef, 100% grass-fed. And uh, we've had a long connection with the food shelf, certainly goes way back to May, when May was here, whom we all miss. And um, just very often, you know, we'll have some extra amounts of meat and certainly are happy to donate it. On occasion, the food shelf has been generous enough to have gotten grants and offered to pay and they order meat, which we're happy to do. Um, so I'm just, I just know that it's really important that we all support our food pantry. Because of the coronavirus, of course, we lost all our restaurant business, but we've um, set up a delivery system and we're doing home deliveries as well as, well, a, a sanitized pickup at the farm and um, it's been pretty busy for us. So anybody who's sitting home bored, I'm not sitting home bored. <laughs> we're, we're almost overwhelmed, but we're good, we're good. And we also have a good planner, meaning Ben, who really figures out what we need to be growing and as far as numbers of animals, who gets harvested when, and so we're, we're kind of tight as far as those numbers go. So. We don't have a lot of extra to share with other farms. Uh, my name is Patricia LeBlanc. I'm from the Hazen Monument Farm in East Hardwick. Um, I supply, uh, I have a small backyard flock of eggs that I sell to the food shelf, which is really good for me and they seem to enjoy having, having my eggs. Um, I try to volunteer here as much as I can in any way. Um, I'm always on the lookout for recipes um, to uh, promote uh, with things that you could use from the food shelf um, so that, you know, people have ideas because I know, you know, sometimes when you're juggling a lot of things, you always need an idea what to cook for supper. Um, it's, I think it's really nice to have local eggs and then and when there is grass my chickens are out running around on grass so that that kind of makes them taste better and it's really nice for me because uh, we've retired from our, our bigger farm and um, uh, this still lets me have an agricultural product that um, um, I get to play with uh, hi my name is John Todd Hill um, my wife Terry and I are new to the area and we've been volunteering at the food pantry since January of this year. Um, we are newly retired and wanted uh, uh, to come up with a way to get involved in the community and really give back to the community and um, we were introduced to the food pantry uh, through the church that we attend here, St. John the Baptist Church and um, just felt like this would be a, uh, was a good opportunity to really give back. Um, and it's been a very rewarding experience for us. The local um, farming community here um, has been very generous, um, you know, with, uh, with local produce and local meats that uh, are donated, as well as uh, local eggs and, and uh, dairy products as well. And so, yeah, so I think the, the, you know, the overall community has certainly um, rallied around the, you know, supplying the food pantry. Hey, hi, I'm Caitlin Strong. I live in East Hardwick, 
and I am doing this table today that's um, offering people recipes for the various ingredients they get in their boxes and also advertising giving out these about the upcoming grow your own workshop which is about square foot gardening with Michael Gray and Carol Fairbank and the grow your own series are all like learning how to can or dry food or how to put up your own food for the winter so that's the latest workshop from them and there's also the masks that the Hardwick neighbor to neighbor group has organized and so there's different sizes small medium and large and those are free and those are always available here when people come to pick up their food they can always get new masks if they need some for family or friends and all the information of the website is on this card and then we're also handing out today this new thing which is really cool which is a grocery gift certificate from the Center for an Agricultural Economy. And the, the certificate is a $50 value and it can be redeemed at Buffalo Mountain Food Cooperative, the Hardwick Village Market, the Craftsbury General Store, the Craftsbury Village Store, Willie's Store and Smith's Store. So all the people that um, come to get their box of food can come get a gift certificate and even if somebody's coming for the first time today they can also get a gift certificate and they're one per household so um, you know really trying to connect all those pieces of people that are giving out free seeds and plants doing the workshops and helping people learn how to garden offering people boxes of food it's all connected and it's all beneficial hi I'm John Ramsey I'm the executive director at the Center for an Agricultural Economy here in Hardwick and through the COVID-19 pandemic crisis, the Center for an Agricultural Economy has continued to operate. There are three core functions of our food hub. The Vermont Food Venture Center, which is a shared processing facility and warehouse space for farm and food producers. The Just Cut program, which is our farm to institution program. And the Farm Connects uh, delivery service. So at the Center for an Agricultural Economy, we've had to pivot many of our programs to meet emerging needs. Our business services team has worked with many, many farms, especially dairy farms, through this, uh, through this time to help them enroll in the federal relief programs. Our farm to institution program has had to pivot drastically. Uh, that program provides freshly processed produce to institutional kitchens around Vermont and New England and when college, colleges and universities shut down we had to change direction quickly and a lot of the food that would have gone to those institutions has now gone to meet the needs of the community and um, help with uh, food security issues that our community are, are facing. So every week uh, we bag and source local produce that go to the Hardwick Food Pantry or other food pantries around the Northeast Kingdom. And that's been a great way to continue to support farmers and um, provide a market for them for their products, but also get food to those who need it. We continue to see the need for additional uh, support. We launched a food voucher program in partnership with the Hardwick Food Pantry. We started a grant program for farmers to help them uh, make shifts in their marketing plans due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of them um, did not have an online ordering platform, for instance, and those micro grants have enabled them to uh, get one up and going. We've also worked with dairy farms to help them sell milk directly to uh, customers uh, through that program. And now we're getting involved in the, the large USDA program, uh, Farmers Feeding Families. That's a program that um, has been in the news a lot lately. Uh, a lot of images of cars miles, miles and miles along, uh, lining up to get local food. And through partnership with the Abbey Food Group, Green Mountain Farm Direct, and Deep Root Organic Co-op, 
uh, we will begin to source and aggregate local food for that program as well. In June, we're planning on sourcing and aggregating and packing 13,000 pounds of local food for that program. And then again, in partnership with all of those other um, folks, starting in July, we plan to ramp up to 9,000 pounds a week until the end of the year to help support that program. Right now we're standing at Atkins Field. It's the 15-acre property in the heart of Hardwick that the Center for an Agricultural Economy owns. We have a new great uh, pavilion that we're under right now that we finished construction on last year. And on this property, we also have uh, hiking trails and community garden space and a community greenhouse, uh, a community orchard. There's a bike track. And we really see this property as being an intersection between food and place-based education and the community and bringing all of those three things together. The Hardwick Farmers Market um, uses this space every week on Friday. Reeve Basum is our um, place-based education coordinator and she works very closely with our local school district and uh, implements um, curriculum that, that helps connect um, students to agriculture and um, place-based learning and that's a big part of what we see uh, for the vision of Atkins Field here as being a place to connect people to food and, and make those connections uh, and help farmers make those connections to the public so that they understand where their food comes from and how it's produced and um, you know understands you know the complexity of agriculture and and you know they also uh, appreciate what is put into into that food in order to deliver it to them. I think that Vermont is seeing the payoff of investing in a local food system uh, right now especially and you know Vermont as a whole has been investing in uh, revitalizing the local food system for a number of years now and we're seeing the benefits of that. We're seeing you know the ability to connect uh, food with the consumers. We're seeing the, that we have the ability to move food around to those who need it in Vermont. Uh, we're seeing farmers increase production of food and um, you know we're seeing the benefits of all the work that everyone's been doing for so many years including including ourselves at the Center for Agricultural Economy. Uh, so we are very fortunate I think to be in Vermont at this very difficult time. There's other places um, around the country that are struggling with, uh, with access to food right now and to be in a place where we have the ability to, to do so many things ourselves is, is really, really, is really great and really important, but just highlights the fact that we have a lot more work to do um, over the course of the next many, many years to continue on the trajectory that we're on right now so that more farms are producing food uh, for consumers and we scale up markets for, um, for, for more people regionally and, and you know, implement new infrastructure that, that can you know, efficiently bring food to those who need it around Vermont and, and New England. From what I've heard is the, um, the usage of the Hardwick Food Pantry has almost doubled, I believe, from what, from what I've been told. And there's been also a number of different ways in which food is getting out to people. So the food pantry, I believe, has also um, started delivery, whereas in the past it was always by pickup. And so you might not see as many people physically coming to the food pantry space. Um, but there is uh, an increased demand. Yep. We, we also have a program called Grow Your Own, which we um, operate in partnership with the Hardwick Food Pantry, and that is really meant to be a program for anyone, and anyone is welcome to join it. And we uh, have workshops uh, every month that help people understand how to produce their own food or uh, make their own food and it's really driven by the community and what they're seeing as their needs and um, it's, a, it's a great program uh, because it's really community led and it, it, it enables uh, that connection to agriculture to occur for, for anybody in the community. And, and I mean we know we're all in this together as far as farming goes and we all we know we're all in this together as far as the tragedy of COVID-19 hitting us all so um, yeah people are, are working together and 
I mean, we've had farms call us that have run out of product looking for, let's say, pork, if we had any extra. We've been able to help out a few times, but I think just eating it <laughs> and, and going to the different farms' websites is, is helpful and is a good education. We also have a lot of people that are realizing that local agriculture is super important and uh, maybe, maybe they need to support it. And I think that's also what's happening.